now you can start okay hi everyone uh, my name is nisan gandhi i am alumni of ckpcet uh, graduated in year 2012 and uh, right now uh, i'm here in us working for a data science company i'm a python engineer by my day job and hence uh, i'll be taking forward this event this workshop uh, series of uh, hands on workshop from now till end of the presentation uh so uh, what is the plan for today uh today we gonna first talk about the capstone project that we have been uh, discussing for a while now over the chat we gonna say what exactly we need to do and what are the overall plans for that uh and for the three, three days of presentation today we will start with the mom pie and panda we will try to cover in detail with much more functionalities uh this is very essential because uh, next two days going to be about data analytics and data science and before we jump into any of the data analytics and data science work uh we must first understand and like learn about a lot of functionalities that find as present work so that's why that's what we're going to cover today uh and regarding the presentation uh okay let me share my screen and let's talk about the capstone project first Screen one, sir, and so I hope everyone can see my screen now. Uh, so, what is the objective for the? I mean, why we want, why we want you guys to do the capstone project, and what is why we, why this is the uh, plan of the whole program. So, my fundamental understanding is that you cannot learn anything until you apply your knowledge and build something on. on top of that if we keep telling you all the python commands and you know like uh, you can use this data structure and this variable and this function is not going to help you in long term you really need to apply all this knowledge that you are acquiring over this 3 4 days and start applying into some practical applications so that will actually enhance and like strengthen your understanding of the language itself and again lot of you people want to go into data science data analytics and one of that might be one of the reasons why you are taking the python course so this will be very fundamental and foundation for you people to start with and again just knowing and understanding of data processing libraries will will take you long because uh, today python is used everywhere if you are into devops if you are into software engineering if you are into data analytics data science or any other field python has like cross all the boundaries of software engineering and computer science field itself so It's really essential that you know all the data processing libraries. So this is the goal, end of the goal uh, that we want to achieve by trying to do the capstone project. Uh, I would like you to uh, please uh, stop your audio. Please mute yourself, all of you guys. I've been hearing a lot of noises in the background. So now that is out of the way. Uh, what are the rules that? that you have lined up for this presentation for this capstone project so you are allowed to make maximum of 3 people team you can be one person to uh your problem pro problem size that you that you like decide on for your project has to like proposal increase as you add extra member so let's say uh you are putting uh, 50% work as a first member two people will make uh, you know 70% of work and third people will add like another 10% of work so if you are doing a one person uh, there is some minimum amount of work that you have to present and as you add extra member it will increase a portion of the work that you are already doing that we'll see that so the idea is uh, it's not like three people equal to three times work and one people equal to one time work it's like one people 50% second person 20% more and third person 50% more because there is also an overhead when you work in a team and as the team increase the complexity of communication increase and you know just planning increase and all this kind of things kick into the place and that is why i i don't want to like divide uh, equally based on number of people and now we will see what is the expectation as we as the as, as it increased for the presentation uh, i would expect you to make 3 uh, to 4 slides and this is just about uh, talking about uh, what problem you are talking on who are your team members and you know the other things that you want to showcase so you can use a slide presentation for 3 4 uh, you know like 3 4 slides and along with that and this is also must that you have to present the, your work 
when you present your work, it could be Jupyter Notebook or some kind of standalone Python applications, but it has to be some kind of working demo and which says that this is a problem, this is how we do it, and this is a solution. So it has to be like in that fast that fashion you have to present the whole thing. Dateline gonna be one hour before the presentation and how we think about the dateline. So you will be submitting your GitHub link repository that will be separate from your assignment. So you will create one separate repository only for your project. And then uh, in that repository, you, ha uh, uh, you have to like, uh, so we will we will not note your last commit to the repository. It's always timestamped. So we will know that whether you finished it within the deadline or not. Deadline we take very, very seriously. So if you don't make to the deadline, it will severely affect our internal scoring matrices when you don't submit the things within the deadline. So uh, make sure that you stop working everything that you have been doing one hour before we start uh, our final day presentations. Uh, so just keep mindful of the deadlines. And yes, this is not like you can submit anything and we will accept it. We need to see some minimum level of project work, satisfactory work. If you don't see satisfactory work, you may deny your, your certification out of this program because this project work is going to be the distill of all that you learned throughout this pro whole program. So if you can't showcase that you learned enough, then uh, you know it's uh, we may not give you the certification. Anyways, and finally the demo day. So how the presentation look like? So ideally we're going to have ten minutes to present your work, and finally two minutes will be for question answer. So per team we will be having twelve minutes. Uh, dedicated for each team and then uh, considering there are 20 22 people and uh, the whole math will add up to the two hours and presentation so uh, these are the rules for the presentations now project guidelines now what it look like when you are like team of one two or three so the idea is uh, we have put up some mi minimum work limitation per team but there is no maximum limit so one person can like build the whole end-to-end -end project a huge thing and we'll really appreciate that or it's fine if you can't do that, but that it has to be something minimum has to be done if he's a one percent team. And the and the limit of work size of project will increase as per your team increase. So one person can uh, minimally he can pick on any open source data set and then uh, you know just tell about hey this is a data set I did all this X Y Z analytics and this is something I found interesting about the data set. It could be hey this is the COVID nineteen data set from all over the world and our analysis says that with this chart and this graph that you know that uh, that china was like had highest number of quick cases in the start in january but declined in february while us started high, highest number of cases in march but declined in may or something like that so it has to have like a chart a graph and a kind of like exploratory analysis that what you did with the data set how you how you massage your data and then finally what are the insights that you, you you are taking out of the data set? So that could be something one person project. If you are doing on two person project, uh, you can do something called feature engineering. We'll talk all this about what is feature engineering in upcoming lectures. But uh, it's just like extending your data set, uh, either mean by adding more data sources. So scope one could have you can take only one 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 data set, only one file, one tablet data, and work around that. And if you are two person, you are not allowed to do that. You have to have at least two. Or more data sources to form your uh, to form your data set, and it could also be that you pick one data set, but you are also uh, just using one data set and building the model. So it has to be two part. One is picking up one data set, and second is like doing more with the data set, either adding more data set to find some answers or doing some kind of machine learning work. And finally, if you have three people, three people one, then it has to have three part. Feature engineering could be one part where you take the data set, massage it, and like extract more out of the data set. Exploited data analysis where you create chart and graph and tell about what is you, what you found interesting in the data set. And finally, a machine learning model where you say that, hey, this is a data set, this is what we found, and finally, this is the model which can predict certain things. And all these things will come forward when we go forward because today, uh, so for the, these three days, the way we have planned the whole thing is today we're going to cover uh, the Python pandas and NumPy in general. And if time permits, we will go through one use case. And next two days is going to be about data analytics, graph and chart, and learning the machine learning theory as well as practical use case. So a uh, ton of interesting stuff that is coming along in the next two days. Uh, OK, let's go forward. 
So this is the whole guidance for your topic choose uh, topic selections. Uh, in today's assignment, you have to build your team, you have to pick your topic, and you need to submit the whole thing. So you will be able to see that in your in your today's assignment. But uh, for today's deadline, you have to do that. You have to pick the team, you have to pick the topic, and you have to tell that you know all the instructions are there in the assignment. Now, finally, how your presentation slide looks like. So uh, make sure that uh, you know it's formatted like that. You talk about your name, your enrollment number, or any any number that your college represent as your unique ID, and your college name, and email address, your picture maybe, title of project, and then you can go for uh, your explanations that how you plan the whole thing, what you did as a part of project, and finally, uh, you know, presentation. So th that's that is the whole thing about how we're gonna proceed with the project. Uh, Let's move to our today's actual presentation. So let me bring in today's topic. Let me zoom in a bit so you can see that. OK. By 175%. Make zoom to 175 percentage. OK, OK. Oh, we are at 175 now. Yeah. OK, guys. So as I was talking about for next three days, uh, I'm going to be uh, doing all the presentations and taking the workshop. And the plan is uh, for today, we're going we're gonna to cover NumPy and Pandas. And tomorrow, we will cover a chart libraries, which, which, will be, which we will use to create the charts and graph using the data. And then uh, if time permits, tomorrow, tomorrow onwards, we will also start the data science. Data science has so much theory to cover. Uh, even though it would be very introductory, but still there is so much theory to cover. And uh, the third day, uh, we will be covering examples of building a machine learning model itself, looking at different kind of projects and uh, what are the matrices and how uh, in industry people go for machine learning models and how they execute the project itself. Uh, one more thing. So uh, when it comes to your project, uh, so I'm not going to dump the whole thing at one day, like, hey, you have to do the whole project within the one day. Uh, we Any project can have four stages. Understand this. First is requirement. Second is planning. Third is execution. And finally is like reporting or presentation. So within your third day, we will be done with your requirement and planning. So I will, as a part of your assignment, today is the requirement. Tomorrow will be planning. And then uh, by the time you reach your final day, after end of this three workshop, you will be already at your execution phase. So all you have to do is you know what problem you want to solve, you know what you what data you want to look at, and at the at the end of the day, like at, at the end of the third day, that means at the, at the end of the sixth day, you will already know what what is the problem. Like you you will be already in the execution phase. So uh, just to like mix your just I'm telling you out there. You know, it's not going to be. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll help you through the whole process, but uh, you have to come. You have to follow through the process and come out as a winner. That is the whole point. Okay, so now let's get into the project. A uh, few things. Uh, uh, Ami Madam has been an academician, so her teaching and her explanations of everything will come from the academic uh, point of view. But since I'm working in industry, a uh, lot of things that I will tell you is from the industry point of view. That means uh, talking about industry standards and best practices, and uh, you know how people do the things in industry. So uh, I think this is great addition because a lot of you will end up in industry. So uh, just make sure that you pick on all those points when I talk about and make and be mindful about that. Okay, so finally let's get into the workshop itself. Uh, so first thing first, what is NumPy and Pandas? Very in general. Uh, so you already have so python already have its own inbuilt list and dictionaries and sets and all kind of ex data structures but they become very limited when you want to process huge amount of data multidimensional data which is often comes into scientific computing uh, let's say you are uh, modeling a car and you are rendering the car or you are analyzing the protein structure of certain you know uh, living organism or uh, or any kind of, let's say, uh, you are looking at the mathematical equation, which is like multidimensional. If you say a, a, a x squared plus bc, uh, a x squared plus bx plus c, you are already in three dimension. 
and you can imagine that some of the scientific equations can go very long uh, they have many applications in physics astronomy and a lot of other places so basically when you're working on high dimensional data uh, 2d 3d 4d 5d 6d or even nd uh, and you're working with the real time huge data uh, your python become really limited in terms of performance and functionality because a lot of the functionality that you need it doesn't provide them uh, numpy and pandas are coming out of uh, something called r programming language so that is their first inspiration now many of you know, might know about the r programming language or at least heard of it that it is being used by mathematicians so r programming language was designed for mathematicians but when things evolved then python picked up and implemented their own version of those libraries that were already available in r so now software engineers and people familiar with the you know the regular coding practices can also incorporate uh, those mathematical uh, you know capabilities within the python and that is the reason why you see that uh, python has come out as a winner for data science because it picked up on all those uh, uh, mathematical libraries that were present in uh, in the r the mathematicians programming language and now it is part of the, part of the uh, whole python ecosystem so numpy and pandas absolute if you are looking into data analytics because they provide enormous amount of uh, flexibility capabilities and faster execution for your data when it becomes huge data okay now let's get into it it's a very standard practice to do the import numpy as np and, and pandas as pd it is just renaming your numpy as np and pandas as pd so you don't need to like write numpy all the time and pandas all the time you can just write pd and np in the sort forms uh, like any other libraries in uh, there is something called underscore underscore version if you remember uh, this is the uh, uh, no, uh, the protected uh, variable which tells about the version of the particular language so uh, it depends whatever version you are using or whatever version you have installed in your uh, in your in your laptop will show the different versions for them so now let's get started with numpy now why numpy numpy has a promise that if you want to work on huge numerical data and they are also into like a uh, big uh, multi dimensional space uh, numpy provide you faster executions and a lot of inbuilt functionality that help you manipulate the data and work with them now uh, how you start with numpy so the most minimum thing that you can do is a numpy so it's a basically you work with the vectors of data vectors of number and you start with something called np.array np.array so np.array this is how you initialize your uh, uh, numpy array and you need to pass something so here uh, you are taking a list a regular python list passing into a numpy array which will create the numpy array basically so so basically if you want to create numpy array you can pass you can uh, pass regular uh, python array and it will convert it it will convert your regular python array into numpy array so as you can see here uh, the, uh, our a is your uh, like this is the numpy array that we have created using our regular uh, list now uh, let's see how we can figure out what is the size of your what is the dimension of your numpy array uh, so here we are creating numpy array again and this time we are passing the matrix in terms of like list of list so this is so this is our outer list which is one dimension and then we are passing the two list so basically we are creating uh, a two dimension list here uh, which is technically a matrix and uh, these are rows and, and you can see the number of rows and columns. So this is our row one, this is our row two, and then column likewise. So when you say, when you create the array and when you type a.save, so a.save will tell you uh, like dimension one, dimension two, and it could go on like dimension three, four, five, as, 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 as far as, as you can go. So uh, two and three, uh you may call it row and column but they may very well be better called dimension one and dimension two because uh you can come you can go up to any number of dimensions here uh as much dimension you can create within the within your uh list of uh you know list of list if you create more more number of uh, uh hierarchical list then you can create deeper number of dimensions here and that you can print here so a dot save to print the dimension uh size of the dimension one and two likewise 
now uh, this is all about like passing the whole uh, number like the whole list and creating an array can we do it automatically so there is a method called a range uh, you already familiar with the with the range method when, from the python which is basically an iterator and you pass a number and it will basically give you the list of or actually iterator of number that starts from 0 or and go till whatever number that you pass here and same here you have something called a range where you pass a number and np.a range will actually create an array which has numbers starting from 0 up to uh, 24 one more thing in computer science world uh, basically when you pass any number or when you pass any range it is always considered inclusive exclusive this is something by default inclusive exclusive means when you pass on the range let's say a comma b so your end up the list that you end up with will always have a but will not have b that is very standard practice in computer science whenever you are representing a range it will be always inclusive and exclusive include first number exclude last number and that is how it always works so in that same spirit when you pass 24 it's 0 to 23 uh, this could be very well be 0 comma 24 and basically zero is included you are not passing zero because by default it is zero you can very well pass zero uh, but the idea is uh, it's, uh, it's a range and it go from inclusive exclusive range zero to 23 so this is how we can create one dimensional array uh, now uh, let's go to next now we can create uh, another array you can np uh, np uh, empty and uh, this is how you pass on a dimensions and it will it will just create the it, and when you pass, when you say d type equal to int so this is the this is the thing that do the magic here uh, so when you say d type equal to int that means all the numbers within your numpy will be of integer type so all the numbers in your array in your numpy array will be of type integer d type will tell you what type of uh, you know uh, the data that you put into your numpy array and here we are initialized uh, with numpy dot empty and calling 3 comma 2 so it will just create an array uh, with 3 comma 2 as a 3 comma 2 is a dimension so your dimension 1 is 3 and your dimension dimension second is 2 so here you can see that uh, if you like in the in the list form if you can see here your first dimension is 3 and second dimension is 2 so how do you think how you see about the first and second dimensions so this is so your first parenthesis your, your first square bracket uh, sorry give me a second let me turn my can uh, okay uh sorry for the alarm anyways so uh np dot empty so uh your first parenthesis so see what what elements it contains this is the element one in within your your top upmost topper square bracket this is the element one this is the element two and this is the element three so that is why it is three and for all of those three if you get inside that so this is element one and this is element two so this is how three comma two comes together and create the you know first dimension second dimension array here. Now let's what if you want to create the uh, numpy array with all the elements initialized with the zeros. So you have something called np dot zeros which will initialize numpy array with uh, five zeros. So you can see them by default they will be uh, of uh, type uh, float. So that's why you see zero dot. So this dot represents that they are of uh, d type float and uh, same like zeros there are ones you can initialize with ones and then going forward np dot ones uh, and same thing so here we haven't provided any dimension here we are providing the dimensions and then we are telling them hey we want it to be a type integer so that's why you see them as an integer uh, and not float now let's move forward uh, so uh, just in the same spirit uh, we implicitly added like the list itself here we are like we, we have an x variable and it is a list and then we are saying that np dot as array x so we are just passing x as a uh, input and it will that will give you our array and uh, numpy array and as you can do with the list you can also do with the tuple so if you have a tuple you can pass a tuple and it will also create the same output so this is basically uh, you know, you can pass either list or tuple, and you can still create the same uh, numpy array. Now let's move to the another capability. So something called linear space. So what linear space does? Let's say you want to create an array, 
where I want to say that, hey, give me an array with first element this, last element this, and equally distance, and number of elements should be five in between the whole thing with equally distanced. So basically starting from 10, and you get 20, and five element in between them who are equally distance. So you can use something called linear space, and then you can pass 10, 20, and five. So this will give you like 10, 20, and then five element who are equally distance. And when you want to create five elements between 10 and 20 with equally distance, it, it is basically by distance of 0.5, uh, sorry, 2.5. So like 10, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, so equally distance. So this is how you can create the list of arrays with equally distance uh, numbers, basically. Now let's move forward. Let's say if you don't want to include the last endpoint, so you can say that, hey, don't include last endpoint and 10, 20 and equally distance by five. And then you end up with the array 10, 12, 14, which is basically two point uh, with equal distance equal to two. And then if you want to know that what was the number being used while creating those steps, like what was the difference between all these two equally distance number, you can say that wrap step equal to true. What it will does is while creating your response array, which will be instead of simple array, it will be now tuple. And tuple will have the first element, which is same as what, like this. And the second, and the second element of your tuple will be the, you know, what is the, that that uh, incremental uh, arithmetic step that was added in each number to create the next number. So if you note here, this was like just a single element. Here, here it is tuple of two. First is what it used to give it to give it to you here, and second point is uh, the wrap step. Uh, now let's move forward, um, uh, creating an array with multi-dimension. Here we have an array. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about the uh, array indexing. So uh, here you saw that uh, this is our X, and uh, this is how it looked like. It's a two-dimensional NumPy array with 1, 2, 3, 5, 4, and 5, 6. Now, what we want to do is uh, we want to print. And, and so basically, we want to pick the numbers here, and we want to print those numbers. So how are we going to do that? So if you think about this, uh, this is basically, you can say that this is like 0, 0. If you think about the two-dimensional matrix and indexes, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1 comma 0, 1 comma 1, 2 comma 0, 2 comma 1. So this is how we can look at this matrix and their internal indices. And what we want to do is, uh, let's we, let's say we want to pick certain numbers using their indices. So how we can do that? So first thing, we know x is our array. So we're going to keep x as an array. And then we're going to pass this list of indices in two dimensions and tell that give us these numbers. So x is basically your x. And now within the x, you're going to pass this, this two dimension number, which is basically tell you that, hey, give me the number at this particular indices. So give so for x, give me the index, which is at 0, 0, 0, which is going to be 3. Give me the number, which is 1 and 0, which is basically uh, 3, because you know this is 1, and then this is 0. And give me index, this is 2 and 0. So this is basically 5. So if you see here, uh, if you want, if you have like multi-dimensional array, and if you want to like pick the numbers or pick the elements from this multi-dimensional array, what you can do is, you can you can within the multi-dimensional array, you can pass this kind of indices, and indices will be paired in this way. So like in your inner list, like first element, first element, and that will select your element within the list. If we had let's say three-dimensional array, so you might have like uh, comma uh, one more. One more dimensions here, and then you pick number from here, one here, one here, one here. The coordinate from those three will give will give you the number uh, or will will position the element within the array and will you the response. Uh, so it might look like a bit complicated, but think like that. This is your x, and this is your uh, this is your array, and uh, within the x, which is two dimensional array, you are passing the uh, passing the two dimensional indices, which you want to choose to pick your element. So this is for your, this is this will represent the uh, first dimension of the element that you want to pick. This is represent the second dimension of the element that you want to pick. 
and if you have multiple dimensions you can keep on adding multiple dimensions and then it pick the element by from your first dimension element what is the index here from your second dimension what is the index here and then finally pick the element and give you the element so you can use this kind of uh, way to pick your elements and the same here happens for y2 so here what we are trying to pick is a uh, 0 0 that is of course your uh, your first element here 1 1 which is your uh, uh, you know uh, so the first uh, first dimension is one in indexing 1 0 1 and in the second dimension 0 and 1 so 4 is picked up and finally 2 means 0 1 2 so that is like your last your first dimension going to be this this one and then on the second dimension zero so that's going to be this one so this is how you do in indexing i'm telling you all in detail because uh, we're going to use indexing a lot going further so indexing is very important tool while filtering your data because when you have multiple data huge data you want to filter your data very much likely you're going to use multiple type of indexing and filtering so uh, get yourself familiar with that you're going to use this a lot okay now let's move forward now that we have seen this filtering now this was picking up the index basically you are telling that hey give me the data on this point that point and that point now what you want to do we want to filter data based on certain condition like i don't care what is the position they are at i don't know what their position is i want the data which meet certain criteria so how you can do that you might have already seen this yesterday in your pandas and numpy uh, but again here so what you do uh, first you pick your element x and then you put the condition that hey for x give me all the elements in the x which are greater than 5 so here in our this data set so there is only one six so that we can get here so idea is this will be your index so first thing you tell that hey uh, give me x and so this is your x and then you tell x greater than 5 what this will does is it will internally create a true false array so what happens x is greater than 5 so what it will do within the x it will compare every element of x with the 5 so 1 is greater than 5 false 2 is greater than 5 false 3 is greater than 5 false 4 is greater than 5 false 5 is greater than 5 false 6 is greater than 5 true so internally when you say x greater than 5 it will internally create some kind of true false true false array and pick only element who has come out as a true so the 6 come out as a true so it will be it will be picked so when you put any condition here think like that when you're passing on x x basically represent for all the elements and then it go on with the condition and then create internally true false kind of uh, you know the the array of same dimensions Two dimension, three dimension, four dimension, same set of dimension with true false being replaced for this condition, and for all the elements that are true, so false, 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 true. So this is true. So this will be being picked. This is also very important because we will be using multiple times this logic for uh, for choosing the uh, data because you don't know the index of or you know the point of every data every time. You you say that hey, I have a huge data. give me all the data points which meet certain conditions so this is how we going to do it so just keep note of this uh, this pattern here now let's talk about something called uh, none so in java we have something called null point exception in in c also we have something similar in python we have something called none n o n e which is a singleton object now numpy basically has its own versions of data type and the equivalent of none in numpy is called nan n a n and because it is a uh, numpy's internal data type it is defined within numpy so because of that we say np dot n a n because n a n is defined within numpy and it is equivalent to none if you want to like uh, uh if you want to metaphorically compare with python uh it's going to be none so let's say you have you don't you want to present you have an array which is missing data and missing data is missing it's not like when you say missing that means that you want to represent it something with none null so when you have numpy array it is being represented by np.nan so here we are trying to create an array which says that hey i have two elements in my array which is being none so what about that so 
basically we can create array like that and uh, let's for the purpose of uh, printing this array how it look like let's do this just can enter so as you can see here this is a numpy array which is like this nan which tells that hey this is like none element here and now do this so what we want to do is numpy has a, a method called np dot is nan and then you pass the whole array what this will tell is uh, whether i mean whether certain element is none or not so basically it will return error of true false as i told you like internally it does true false thing so when you say is na a so for each element of a it will it will evaluate whether it is true or false and give you an array which is like equivalent of true and false so you can see that it's a nan true not nan false and then if you want to like negate it let's say give me an array which is like which is not np uh, this will so as you see here now is na is being negated and false become true and true become false now if you remember uh, i told you that within the a when you are when you have an array and you, when you are trying to filter the array what it basically does it basically create so when what x greater than 5 does it basically create an array of true and false so similarly we have the array of true and false of the same dimension and when we pass the same dimension true and false array within the a what it will do it will filter elements which are uh, which are like it will just remove elements which are which are uh, like map to false and only give what is mapped to true like similarly what we did here as greater than 5 we internally create this kind of array false 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 true and whatever is mapped to true in our case 6 is mapped to true so that will be that will be in return so similarly here uh when you when you pass this whole thing which which is the internal representation of true false array and whatever was mapped to true uh will be kept and what was mapped to false will be not kept so that is what we did here logistic of uh telling that it's a nan then make it false and keep and make make for other element make it true and that's how we come to this array i will try to run faster because uh, we have a lot to cover uh so th this is this is important because this is very much fundamental when you're trying to filter the whole thing i'm telling all all these things here with the numpy because same thing will be applied to your pandas also similar logic same thing we will be using same kind of filtering in pandas also same true false array and everything like that and panda has been much more built on top of numpy so uh, numpy will be used a lot of within internally pandas so that's why knowing numpy is important now let's create one more array for our uh, for our playground and this is a uh, uh, array with uh, shape of uh, 3 comma 2 two dimensional array uh, and sorry 3 comma 3 there are two rows two columns uh, one dimension is 2 to the second dimension is also sorry one dimension is 3 second dimension is also 3 so it's a 3 comma 3 array uh, and uh, let's perform all the uh, you know uh, operations that we call as a uh, uh, the statistic statistical uh, operations like mean max and stuff like that now let's uh, so how we can do that so if you want to find like minimum maximum within numpy array what we can do is np dot a mean like array minimum and then you pass the array and now uh, we are passing this one and zero i'll come to um, i'll come one and zero to later but let's say if we just pass uh, np dot a mean or a max and only pass an array it will only return one element basically it will look at all the details all the elements and create that again that true false kind of map and uh, sorry not true false kind of map but basically it will filter out uh, the maximum element from your whole matrix from your whole array from your whole n dimensional array it will pick the number which is maximum but what if you want to uh, only pick the element from either only your dimension one or dimension two or basically you only want to pick element from uh, you know from row and from column so basically what you can do you can pass the dimension from which you want to pick the maximum number so here in this case we are picking the minimum number so 
this says uh, get me number from dimension one and get me number uh, like x is one and x is zero. X is one is row wise and x is zero is column wise. Now, just this is just hard fact, just like memorize this. This is gonna come everywhere and this is the same logic everywhere. Uh, when you say x is equal to one, it's always gonna be row. When you say x is equal to zero, it's always gonna be column. Just, just you know, take it as a random fact. This is something someone decided while implementing NumPy library, and this is what you're going to live with. So when you say one, that means uh, for row wise, give me the minimum number. So because we have three rows, we're going to have an array with three elements, every element representing the minimum from one row. So your row one, three. So you have like three. Your row two, uh, again, three, because the minimum is three. And row three minimum is two, so three three two. And now we're gonna do the same operation column wise by providing index equal to zero. So column wise three eight two. So what is the minimum? Uh, two. You can see two here. Here four is minimum, and here three is minimum. Now you can explicitly say mean and uh, x is as a a x is zero and one, which is like explicitly telling them, hey, my x equal to zero and x equal to one. If you don't do that, it will. You can still work with that, but. It's a better when you provide the axis, which will make it much more explicit. And here we are finding, uh, you know, maximum number x is zero. That means column wise. So, uh, and because we are providing the axis here, it has to give the number for each column. So for column one, eight, for column two, seven, and for column three, nine, and the same for the row wise. Now uh, that is all for uh, our NumPy array. Uh, uh, so a uh, lot of the NumPy array are being used in Python pandas also. So it is important that uh, we like we make we, we understand all these things very well because all this knowledge that you have gained here will be used. And internally, pandas also use a lot of NumPy thing. Now, a couple of differences between when you want to use NumPy and when you want to use pandas. NumPy should be used on high dimensional numerical numbers, numerical values. So when you're using NumPy, you don't expect or you don't do the string operations here. I'm not saying that you cannot load strings into NumPy, uh, into NumPy array, but it's designed for numbers and it works on multi-dimensions in much faster. So that's your use case to use NumPy. Now pandas, you can use all kind of data type, all kind of like it's very good to use with the string also. And also it internally use uh, NumPy for its internal implementations. Again, one thing, NumPy, as I told you, can work with uh, huge multiple dimensions. Pandas can also work with multiple dimensions, but, but we basically stick to two dimensions with pandas because a lot of operations are defined in that way. So uh, this is like basic core differences between NumPy and pandas. And normally what happens in data science world or data analytics world, uh, whenever you have some kind of, uh, this, this might be true more for uh, machine learning models, most of the machine learning models only work with the numbers. They don't work with the data as a string. They don't work with the text at all. And there are a lot of methods in which when you have a data and you want to build the model and input data has a text, you can convert that text into numbers. And that num and basically you end up with uh, your final post-processed data set that will be fed into machine learning model. And that data set will only have numbers. All your string will be re replaced with numbers. And very well, you can use NumPy there. And there are multiple techniques how you can replace your string with the numbers. We will look into this in upcoming lectures as we enter into data science world. But basically, numbers are everywhere. And uh, even though you have a string, you will very well end up with the post-processed data set, which will only have number, because you more than often convert your, num your strings into numbers. and it's high dimension. It's like it can go to large number, and uh, all the algorithms on numerical data as dimension increase, complexity increase, and NumPy's are designed to process those data faster. Okay. Uh, so let's move to the uh, our second part of the whole thing. Uh, now this is important. Python pandas. Now, as I told you that Python pandas are uh, used widely for all the data analysis, data processing. And basically, there are two kinds of data structure that goes into Python pandas. First is called series. And as name suggests, it's a series. So basically, uh, 
series like it's a one dimensional array and data could be of any type it could be string it could be integers it could be float it could be some other thing like boolean uh, as i told you that pandas are designed for multi multiple data types they are not designed for numbers which is numpy is and uh, it's something called non mutable now what is non mutable non mutable is a data structure where when you create a data structure you you will you will not be able to modify data structure so assume that you have a you have this string which is allocated let's say uh, 2 mb of the memory inside your ram and you cannot tell, you, you can't change that that particular data structure so let's say if you want to add new element you you never change that 2 mb you don't like add the extra you know uh, block of memory and say that hey now this is 2.2 mb and i have added this new data here it doesn't happen like that when you have non mutable data structure and when you try to mutate them you basically create the whole new memory block so your original 2 mb memory stay as it is and now you are creating the second 2.2 extra memory block which is non mutable so now you end up with like you know your uh, your garbage data or your old data of 2 mb block and your new new memory block of 2.2 mb now you may say that why we are not you know why why we do that like why we why we want to like you know allocate the extra memory whole itself and not stick to the uh, mutability of the you know why we want to do the non mutable data structure when it is cost more memory versus mutable which can cost less memory so there are multiple reasons first thing uh, is always good practice to have non mutable data because uh, uh, when you mutate data you may very well end up with lot of error where you are trying to access something and it is not there and that you see often in your data processing pipeline you will see in future why, how it plays out but basically you create the data which is not which is mutable and then you remove something you add something and you couple of steps and you try to retrieve something but it is not there through an error and uh, it's just it's just mess and again when you want to like and because it's a uh, mutable that means you can change the data so a lot of the data processing happens in parallel and you want to really use the parallelism while doing data processing because you know it's independent data and you can process faster where you can have data which is not dependent on each other and you can uh, process them in parallel but if they're mutable if they're non mutable then you can guarantee that hey while i'm processing this data in parallel it will not change programmatic programmatically it is impossible to change the data when you are processing them and when you are creating the new set of data so basically it doesn't uh, interfere uh, with the parallel processing architecture when you are using non mutable data and that is why you see that lot of this uh, functional programming which or lot of this parallel programming uh, infrastructure highly recommend non mutable data structure when you have mutable data structure then anyone can come in anyone can change it and when you are doing the parallel processing imagine that you have this one sim block where anyone can come and you know uh, write and read anyone can write and read but when you're trying to process in parallel you you want to block it you don't want anyone to you know reading is fine anyone can read but you don't want to change the data when you're processing them in parallel it will create a lot of problems so basically the idea is uh, because you want to do parallel processing because you we don't want to like get into some kind of a uh, uh, race condition or get into this hell of uh, you know someone change the data and it doesn't is it's not same as it used to be you want to work with the non mutable data structure and panda by default is non mutable but it still have mechanism to force them to mutate so uh, i'm just putting up my case here that when you're processing with data always use non mutable data structure as much as possible it will help you in doing your parallel processing now let's get into it so series i as i say there's a non mutable one dimensional data set uh uh what it takes first it takes data so uh as we were doing before like while creating i mean when you are creating series series kind of data structure we need to pass any kind of data it can take uh arrays it can take numpy arrays it can take uh some other kind of like iterables which can you know iterate and produce the list so anything any kind of data that is iterable it can take in and create the series out of it indexes so you can also provide something called indexes we will look into that what are indexes d type as we talked before d type is basically uh uh like providing a data type like hey i want to enforce uh integer or float even though number look like integer i want to enforce float or even though number look like float i want to enforce integer as a data type so you can do all this 
uh, explicitly you can force the data type. If you don't provide data type, it will internally uh, try to guess the data type. And then, you know, if let's say your data type has something missing, let's say, you know, the uh, it has missing uh, number. So instead of guessing it as a number, it will guess it as a hey, it is an object because I have number n empty as a data input data. So sometimes you want to do that uh, data type enforcement for some random uh, use cases or some corner cases. And copies, you want to create the separate copy if you don't want to change things. So we won't we won't use copy much. Basically, data index and type. You can provide custom indexes. We'll see what is what do you mean by custom indexes. But when you pr don't provide any custom index, it will go from zero, one, two, three for your rows. So now let's get into the series merge here. Uh, okay, just keeping an eye if someone texted me telling me that you need to slow it down because. I might go faster, and I won't realize that I'm going faster. So just text me if you feel like, hey, you are going too fast. Anyways, let's get into series. So how you can create series? So as I told, you can create series with multiple things. You can create series with simple array or also with NumPy array. So what we are doing here, we are passing NumPy array here. And we know how to create NumPy array and p.array and pass the array. So this is your NumPy array. You're passing a NumPy array in PD dot series. PD, as I told you, is the sort form that we create as a standard practice. Uh, PD and we initialize the series by saying PD dot series, and then we pass the NumPy array. So this is your series. Now, if you see here, uh, when you print the series, it says this zero, one, two, three, and then this ABCD, and then D type object. So what all of these things are? So first thing, ABC as it's a data as obvious. Zero, one, two, three are indexes. And uh, they're by default index, so by default start with zero and just follow until the end of the numbers. And then final D type. So here we are not providing any kind of D type, but uh, when there is a string like object, it's called object. So there is no str, there is an object. So when you pass a string or, or alphabet in your numpy array or in your series, it will create an object. See here, first time we are using uh, alphabet in your numpy array, so it is possible. But it's not just recommended to do that because numpy are not designed for work with the work with the uh, strings it's, so basically even though just saying that like it's possible but not recommended to use uh, alphabet into your numpy array now within the series we have passed the data we have created the series and as you understand this is your index this is your data and this tells that what is the type of the object now let's do let's try to like customize this and like see what we can do here so P, so uh, now create the same thing here, but this time we are pass we are we're gonna pass index and we're gonna pass index equal to you know uh, something custom, just numbers starting from 100, 101, two and three. Now some understand something here. Oh, even though it is called index, this is not basically index. This is basically tagging a row or tagging a element. So. Uh, when we think about index, our, our by default intuition about index is starting from, hey, when I'm accessing an array or any kind of uh, array style data structure, it always have indexes from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. But hey, we are here we are changing indexing altogether, starting from 100. So what I'm going to tell you here is you can access the data still with those 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, but you can again tag them with your custom indexes. So here you are you say that this is second level or this is like custom indexes on top of something that is very internal indexing so we'll see how we can uh, index the data abcd using 0 1 2 3 4 and using 100 101 102 103 but ideally so the idea here is when you say index 100 you pass on index you're basically kind of like giving second level indexes here and this index is not actually indexing they're more like a tagging of the row and when I say tagging, why I say tagging? Tagging means you can tag with anything. You can call this row anything. Here we are calling this row 100. You can tag the same. You can tag two different rows with the same tagging ID. So you can say, hey, my A is also 100 and my C is also 100. So all those things are possible. And because although we call it indexing, uh, just even though we call it indexing, but just internally think about these indexes as a metaphorically as some kind of tagging of the row and you're tagging them. And we will see how we manipulate all this tagging and how we can use them. But the idea is this is not overwriting your 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 indexing. This is providing some kind of extra index on top of what already exists. And what already exists is by default that 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 that we do normally. So custom tagging, 
and that is the reason why they customly print those indexes here because you know this is something customizable this is something that you added into your uh, series and it's going to be with all the series whether you provide or not if you don't provide your internal indexes and your external or your tagged index is going to be same if you provide them then it's going to be different so custom indexes we are done we are we are done customizing this this number this indexing now let's go ahead and uh, now let's create uh, our series this time we are creating our series using uh, using dictionary so as i told you like you can create the series with any kind of iterable st stuff you can also iterate over dictionary so dictionary is also iterable iterable basically means as i as ami madam told you yesterday like anything on which you can run the for loop so you can run for loop on array you can run for loop on your uh, uh, on your index on your dictionary and that is possible because they internally implement something called i double t r and next those two you know iterable some internal uh, methods because of that your data structure is able to support the iteration because of those internal implementation of underscore underscore i t e r methods and next method so coming back here in the series you can pass a dictionary now what happens when you pass the dictionary your keys of the dictionary become the index and your value become the actual value and if you see here i'm writing 0.1.2. Dot, dot, dot. this is the standard way to put like if you have 1.2 it makes sense 1.2 but when you say uh, 0. Point, then it internally assume that it's a floating number and this is very well equal to this but this is just something uh, you can say uh, something that that is part of numpy and panda infrastructure where you don't need to provide the tailing zeros here it just assume that it is there and uh, because of that uh, you see uh, you know consistent float data type here 001020 so you can dictionary also you can create the series uh, you can create the panda series basically now let's move forward now uh, as as index you can you don't need to like literally pass a whole array so let's say here you are passing data which could be huge list of whatever okay maybe treble now you don't want to like pass the index also like you know man manually typing the whole thing so you can use some kind of iterable here for your indexing so when i say you know like uh, when i say when i say index equal to range so index so here instead of passing the list you are passing iterable and it will iterate until until the end of the data that you have passed as a data here and you can literally create the create the list here now if you see here something funny going on that you are creating the index which is so here as a data you are passing only one number but as an index you are passing the whole list so it will just match with your with a number so when you create the index when you provide the index 0 1 2 3 by providing range equal to 4 it will just expand your 5 at until 0 1 2 3 4 uh, uh your number from like five times and this is int d so this is different data type that it has detected so just to make sure like here no place we have used the uh we have enforcing the data type we are just rolling with uh we are just providing the data and the, it, it is assuming in itself is guessing in itself what is the possible d type could be and start with the float and it just try to consume like it just try to expand like hey this is all look like integer it's integer if one of the element would have been float, it would have considered everything as a float. Uh, so one more thing which I forgot to tell you about the NumPy array. NumPy array is a multidimensional array, but all the elements or all the dimensions in NumPy will be of same data type. But that is not true in Pandas. In Pandas, you can have multiple dimensions or multiple uh, you know, columns, basically, with different data type. So NumPy, uh, uh, in NumPy, all are numbers. They could be either float, either integer, or some versions of the float, like float 32, or you know some other kind, other kind of uh, numeric representation internally. Uh, but otherwise, all the met, all the NumPy array, however dimensions they are, every element in that array will be of same data type, and that is not true for uh, for the pandas basically. One small difference. Okay, so now 
what we have been seeing all about was creating the series in pandas now let's move to the accessing the series so we are done with the creating now let's go into the reading of the series reading means uh, either picking element or filtering elements in the series and like retrieving basically so for our experiment let's start with creating a series which has uh, uh, as i told you like uh, a data which is simple array and then in we are providing indices custom indices here so you can see that here okay now so uh, what we want to do is uh, uh, as you can see here uh, we can access the panda series using different slicing operations and from the uh, your uh, this is very similar to what you have seen already in your uh, uh, python list when you say s of 0 so one thing you observe here uh, we are providing numerical indices here and we are not providing this secondary indices here it will still work so basically uh, you don't need to tell them and in most of the cases in the series and, and in the series panda series panda data frame work differently one for on indexing but uh, in the panda series you can use either of them and it will just work fine so as you can see here uh, print s of 0 will pick the first element that is one that you can see here now here it is not printing uh, the secondary indexes because we are picking the element using the first indices and now in second so here we are picking the first only one element and here we are picking the range of the element now if you remember in the slicing operation uh, in the square bracket when you pass a single column and there are two sections here starting and ending so starting section when it is kept empty it assumes starting from zero or like start from the start and uh, when you are providing some kind of number so it assumes that you you stop there basically and again inclusive exclusive rules apply here so starting with the zero because there is none and end with the three so zero one and two zero one and two this is what we are picking here it's a range so you can see it here zero one and two and finally it also print the detail because it's a range it's a full panda series here we are picking only one element so it's an element here you are picking kind of like sub series or like you know subset of the series subset of the element of the series so basically you you filter the data and you end up with the series which is built with the filtered data basically so that is what you see here now uh, the negative one so as you remember that when you use negative number it basically start from the back so you say that go till the end so what is your first element going to be when you say minus 3 so minus 3 that means you start from the back so and when you say minus so uh, you basically count from minus 1 so when you don't provide anything or when you provide positive number you start with 0 but when you're going reverse when you write minus minus sign you basically start with minus 1 so this is your minus 1 so just telling like this is your 0 1 but this is your minus 1 so when you are going reverse you don't start with zero you start with minus one when you're going with going from the start you just go with zero one when you're going back you start with minus one minus one minus two and minus three so it says that this is my minus three position so this is my start position and i want to go till the end so what is my end my end is five so when you're looking at minus three think about this is my starting position what is my starting position starting position minus three that is minus one minus two minus three and then so this is my starting position i have like pointed out my start start pointer and then i go to second part what is my end pointer which is like till the end so at the end so this is my end pointer and then i come up with this whole part so that's what to see here now we were using the internal indices as i told you that uh, we can also use the tagged or which is explicit indices or secondary indices whatever you want to call it so here we are providing with a instead of zero so it will yield you or give you the same element a and you can also like pass the indices as a b and a c and d which is like a c and d so basically one three and four they're providing that hey give me the element over this custom indices and you will get them so this is all about like picking up the element using slicing and selecting in your panda series and as i represent that you can access them using internal indices and something called tagged indices here now let's come to our uh, you know the the rockstar of the whole presentation data frames 
what data frames are. Data frames are basically, uh, in most of the cases, two-dimensional array. And uh, so basically, two-dimensional array, that means it has rows and columns. Uh, rows will be very similar to what we saw as a data as a in our series, where each row will have two indices. One is its internal indices, 0, 1, 2, 3, and one is custom indices. And when you don't provide indices, it will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And here, so we were typing as index equal to something. And here we will have something like column equal to something. So your when you say indexing index equal to custom index, then you also have something like column equal to custom column index. So you you can also name tag your columns as you name tag your rows. And when you don't name tag, it's gonna be zero one two three four as you can see here. Let let me just go back again to the definition that we brought here here. So it's a two D as I told you like mutable data structure, data, and here. From index, you can also provide something called columns. So this is your uh, second dimension, and it is called column. It has very similar functionality as index, almost same functionality, except index work on a row level and column works on a column level, as as you can expect. And D type, uh, of course, D type. And now you can provide D type, which will be mapped to the columns. So basically, here you are providing only one D type equal to only one, like D type equal to integer. Here you will provide like list, like hey, my D type gonna be, you know, for the column one, this is my D type. For column two, this is my D type. For column three, this is my D type. So you can like customly give a list of D types for each column. We will see all these things going forward. So uh, mutable 2D uh, row, column, data type, and data, of course. And as I told you, you can provide data which could be iterable, one dimensional or two dimensional, because when you provide one dimensional, this just basically create data with one row and one column. And uh, so that is how it's two dimensional, but still one dimensional because you have only one column. And you provide something which can be a two dimensional, it will become a two dimensional. We'll see how we create the different Pandas data type and then uh, we will understand uh, how it works one by one. So starting with like uh, uh, providing Panda with only one dimension style data, which is just a list. And you can see here, we are able to create the data which has only one column. And you know, number of rows will be increased based on how much data you have. Column rows, uh, tagging of uh, indices and tagging of columns. When we are not tagging, it's just zero, one, two, three, four, and zero in the com in the case of column. Now let's move forward and try to create two dimensional array. Now, as you see here, uh, we are passing two dimensional uh, list list of list basically and. Uh, so this kind of represent two dimension array or two dimension data. And uh, here you can optionally provide now the columns. And when you say columns equal to name and age, so basically you are not tagging your columns with name and age. And because we are not doing anything with indexes, you can see here it's a zero, one and like zero, one, two, basically. So this is how you can provide the custom columns. And now we have created two dimensional array here. Now, someone want to say, can I do three dimensional array? So I could, I would say that this is your, your row is one dimension. Your first column is two dimension and there, your second column is three dimension. And as you keep on adding all the columns that will increment your dimensions. So all your columns are like number of dimensions plus your additional row dimension. So this is right now three dimension. How? This is your dimension one, this is your dimension two, and this is your dimension three. This is three cross three basically. So that is how you like. And by default, uh, we like we don't we normally talk about only column dimensions. So dimension one, dimension two, but just think about this like three dimension data. Because like of uh, you know, this is we also have this one. But we normally talk about two dimension because we only when we talk about the dimension, we only talk about columns. So uh, let's reduce the complexity. It's two dimension data because we are only talking about the columns and each column mapped to one dimension. So this is our two dimension data uh, and we have two columns. So when we talk about dimensions in the in terms of data set, we are talking about the columns. Features, columns, dimensions, everything is similar and mapped to the same idea of a column. So just for your reference, when I say dimensions, how many dimensions your data has, basically how many columns your data has, how many features your data has, basically also same thing, how many columns your data has. So uh, and as much and we can extend this uh, data with comma, adding more and more element here. 
and that will add more and more uh, you know dimensions here uh, okay so now let's say let's uh, so here uh, by default it try to infer the data type so here all this 10 12 and 13 are numbers so you just print as a number and then you do something called data equal to float so when you do data equal to float it kind of like try to enforce float data type on each column and uh, it will be succeed very succeed it will not do anything when it fails so basically you cannot apply float to the strings because it doesn't make sense so basically you just don't see any changes here but in the number you can apply float so you can that that makes sense you can it's a numeric data type so float can number can be converted into the float or integer can be converted to float so when you say data equal to float it will try it will convert your number to float if you have like multiple dimensions here multiple you know columns here and there are like some random data type let's say uh, there are some booleans here so it will try to convert to float so the idea is when you say data equal to float it will just try to enforce the float on each the each of the column and it makes sense it will do it if it doesn't make sense it won't so that's what it does when you say data equal to float now this was we are creating the creating the data using two dimensional list i mean now we are going to create our panda data frame with uh, with using uh, dictionary so initially when we created the index uh, each like we had this tagging and then each tagging was mapped to one element in the series here what you can do very simple your key going to be your column and the elements going to be basically a list and that list will will be like a, will be like a column basically uh, each each uh, element in your dictionary is basically a single column so this is one key value pair you are putting up a one column second key value pair you, you are putting up a second column and you can just pass it in here and it will just get the you know this this data frame name age name map to list of you know strings age map to list of numbers and just create the whole thing with your with the uh, with the uh, dictionary and as i told you this is iterable so uh, this could be some kind of uh, range some kind of iterator doesn't has to be like full fledged list it could be iterator and that will also work fine okay now let's move to the data here now uh, we been so if you see here uh, pt the data frame uh, we are passing the data and this data implicitly tell what is the column here so name and age are implicitly being told here and now we have this data structure and now let's say we also want to like hey i want also want to give the give the rank or i change the tagging of this 0 1 2 3 so you can do very well by providing indexes so you can say here hey where is column column is already part of the data so we don't need to say column and we still get name and age and index is basically not part of this whole dictionary so uh, i don't know if you can make it part of dictionary i think we can't so uh, you you provide it separately calling index equal to like rank one two three four which is basically pointing to each of your uh you know rows and you tag all of them with you know rank one two three four so this is what you end up with and this is your end uh, final data frame look like so you can add index while creating data frame uh you know and uh, yeah this is another way to add the index here now let's move forward and what happens if I don't, when, while creating the data frame, I don't like provide data in perfect manner, or maybe there is something missing and how it will handle that. So if you can see here, uh, I have this A, B. So I, ha I have like this list of dictionaries. And uh, when I pass list of dictionaries is basically, uh, uh, so here it was only dictionary and only dictionary has row and column. And because of that, uh, because of only dictionary, my each element into dictionary was point to uh, was mapping to the column, but when I provide the list, so in, when I provide the list, so basically inside the list, every dictionary is actually creating the row. So this dictionary is my row one, and this dictionary will going to be my row two. Now, what happens if I if something is missing in my dictionary? So basically, when your data frame is trying to create the data frame using dictionary, it try to create like hey let me check all the keys in all of the dictionaries and create the column from that so here there is a b and here there is a b c so it makes sense that hey i'm going to have a b and c even though c is missing here 
and I'm going to probably do the none here. So like something which is represent like none because C is not present here. But I have to keep the C because in the in my second dictionary, which is going to my second row, has C. So what we end up with is like A, B, and C. Even though C is missing, C is here in second row. Because of that, C will also be somehow presented or make to represent C in your first row also. And because you don't provide C here, it will be none. And A, B, C, and like you know the numbers will be uh, pointed. Now one thing you you want to recognize here with the C. One is nan, and so as you see here, for ten and two, like they are numbers and it are represented as or guessed as an integer. But here for the C, that is one is missing. So it's like I have one number as a twenty, second number is a nan or none or missing. So what do I infer as a data type? Because there is no consistent numbers, I'm gonna keep it as a float. So why twenty is float and not integer? Because there is a none exist and and none. Comma integer style number is not equal to integer. I cannot call this column integer be because all the numbers are not integers. Integer has strictly representation numbers starting from you know like positive and in positive negative non decibel numbers. There is no idea of missing here, so it it will infer it as a float because uh, you know it's missing. So that is one more point I want to make here. And same thing here. So in the in the uh, let's say uh, I have this data, same data, same A B thing, and now uh, I'm gonna enforce columns. So here we saw that the columns were inferred from the from the dictionary. Like it tried to guess what would be my column will be by picking up on the keys of this all the dictionaries that in being passed. But when you explicitly tell that hey, these are going to be my column A and B. It will explicitly create create column uh, using these columns A and B one. Now, what happens if I pa I'm passing the column which is uh, which doesn't exist in my data, and what if there is some column which exists in my data but I don't pass it here? So as you can see here, your column will dictate. So basically, it will try to check if A exists in my data. If yes, then peek on the A's and you know fill it up that column. If B1 exists in my data, if it doesn't exist, just create a column with none. I don't care about what else exists in here. So my lookup starts with start with the column. I look at the column and I and then I go to data and, and do the lookup that hey, can I see this A in my first record, in my second record, in my third record, or my first dictionary, second, third? I don't care about what else exists. I I care about I'm looking at A and does A exist in this particular dictionary? And that's how it keep on building the whole table. So A, make a lookup in data, and then if, if if it's there, put one. If it's not there, put none. And same B1. So it's gonna go and look like, hey, is there B1 here? Is there B1 here? Is there B1 here? B1 is not there. So uh, it end up with none. Let's try with the C just for the experiment. So uh, Columns C, there's a 20. Mm. I'll get back to this. But, anyways, wait, why? Oh, so did you, re did you realize what happened just now? I basically changed my data frame. So, when I executed this first time, I changed my data frame. Then I executed second time. So, my new data frame, which was like A and B1, was got picked up. So this is what happens when you do with the mutable data type. I'm, re re um, I'm replacing DF all the time. So my first DF was this when I executed first time, and my DF was, uh, you know, like with A and B1. And second time when I did DF with C and B1, so it picked up on my my previous. So I need to like rebuild the whole thing again. This could be very well example why we want to like uh, why we want to always create mutable data type. So as you can see here, this is what my DF look like right now. This is my current DF. A, B1, 1, 2, because I changed my DF. Now if I apply, when I re-execute the same thing, so basically uh, my data has been changed, and I'm, I'm like replacing my DF with this new data. And it will act on this data frame. So anyway, so let me, so uh, going for our original example, 
to see the C, I need to rerun the whole thing. Now you see the C here. Why? Because when I rerun in the whole thing, I already deleted the C from my new data structure with my A comma B1 column because I, I didn't pick C. So my new DF had um, B being uh, A being removed, C being removed. Uh, so uh, I like I need to rerun the whole thing to recreate the whole thing, and then I'm picking on the C. And that's why I'm able to see the here, able to see the C here. Um, so uh, this is about mutable. This is why we do the uh, why, why we don't do the mutable thing. And now we are able to see the C here. Anyways, so as, as example point of view, like you pick, you go into the column and then you pick the column from the data and then you see if it exists or not. Uh, okay. Now, I, as I was talking about, like, uh, can we do indexes within the my dictionary itself? So previously, uh, we have this like you know one dictionary when there is only one there is only dictionary that you are using to creating a data frame each each key value pair creates the column and here we are within the dictionary itself we are uh, presenting the uh, uh, we are creating the uh, column here uh, sorry we are tagging the indexes here so here we were we were not able to do that here we are explicitly telling the index and we are in the data we only had like you know name and age uh, but here we are within the dictionary itself. We want to pass the index also. Now, one thing remember, it's a key value pair. So basically, you can only whatever you whatever you provide as a value here has to be only one one type of uh, object. It should be only one object. It could be list. It could be panda series, but it has to be only one object. So we cannot just as just comma. So what we are trying to do here, we are trying to create a panda series. And the series itself will already have index in it. So one and so what we are providing here one with the panda series, two with the panda series, and this panda series, this one object, this like series of data in itself will have index built in, in inside it. So this is like one object. This one object is series. It has number one, two, three, and those numbers are indices with A, B, and C. And then uh, this is the second column. And same thing here. This is like we are creating another series object. And because the series object, and we know that within the series, we can have index. So we are passing index here. So Panda data frame will try to pick on one and two and try to pick on data that is provided here. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. So you can see here there is one value missing. And we know what happens when something is missing. It will put it as a none. And index ABC and index ABCD. So here we have provided a D. So it will just say that, hey, uh, in the Panda series, I don't have anything which is which has index D and which is like there's nothing with index D here. So it says that A, B, C, D, and D as a none. So just trying to like uh, make sense of everything and try to create the data frame out of a series when num things are not matching. It try to like uh, create the series with, uh, you know, like the whole like uh, try to make sense of it. And whatever is missing, try to put none at the missing place and try to create the complete data. Complete table or complete, uh, you know, complete table style structure here. So this is creating a, panda data frame with uh, with the with the single dictionary using panda series, and now uh, we are moved. So this is what this is all about. How we can create the data frame with different ways, and how we provide different uh, ways differently. We can provide the column differently. We, we can provide the rows uh, using different data structure and manipulating index and columns in such a way that. So now that we are done with uh, different multiple ways to create the data, now let's go into how we can uh, do the different uh, modification operation, like uh, selecting and deleting. So let's go go to the column level operations. Now, what do I mean by column level operations? Column level operation is we're gonna pick certain column and apply certain things on column, read a column, filter based on column, delete certain column, all column based things. And uh, in when it comes to data frame, how we pick the column? So your df represents this whole table but when you want to only point or when you want to only work on this one single column you do something like this df and then opening closing bracket and then you pass the name or whatever index that you have given to a particular column so df1 points to this column 1 represent the one now you can also do something like this df dot one it will do the same thing. So either you can do like the whole 
bracket thing or you can do the dot thing and it will it will be the same thing so there's no difference that's two different ways you can uh, peek on you know data from data frame or point to column in the data frame so one or the other whatever you feel comfortable with so df1 so uh, like a dictionary if you are familiar with dictionary operations uh, in the dictionary operations what we do uh, we provide df then opening closing bracket square bracket we write the key and we get the value of that particular so similarly you provide the uh, key as the column name or column tagging or you know whatever you want to call it feature name and and then you get the whole thing here that's like picking one column from your whole data data uh, data frame now let's go into adding a data frame okay there are multiple things going on here uh, let me do this in next operation and let's just do this here so what if i want to add extra column in my existing data structure as i told you data from is data frame is mutable that means i can change the data frame i can do the alteration without uh without like uh, reassigning itself now i will tell you when it is non mutable when it is non mutable uh, it will it you can apply the operations but it will it will not change the original data frame here our original data frame is df df point to our original data frame df1 is still pointing to our original data frame we are just printing the first column now what we want to do in our original data frame we want to add the extra column so what we do df3 remember 3 doesn't exist in our 1 and 2 so 1 2 only exists 3 doesn't exist so we say df3 and then we just do the same thing panda series provide with this provide with the numbers and uh, indexes and and just like there will be missing numbers so now you can see 1 2 and 3 uh, and same as 1 we had we hadn't pointed out d so you can see the d is missing here so 1 2 3 we have added 3 here in our data frame now see df3 so we basically like assigned df3 something so we we like assigned df3 as a part of the we altered the data frame itself by uh, adding something more into data frame we didn't like you know uh, delete the whole df again anyways so this is basically mutable operations because we, we are changing the df we are changing the original data frame itself and we are uh, we are adding one more column this is a mutable operations now let's what if you want to delete certain column so del del is very common command that you can use on a lot of things you can use del on list like regular py py uh, py uh, python list you can use del on regular uh, Python dictionary. If you want to delete certain column into dictionary, you can use DL dictionary name and then square bracket key name, and it will delete that particular key from your uh, from your uh, you know um, uh, from your dictionary. And similarly, the same DEL you can also apply on your uh, data frame. You can say DEL DF and name of the certain column, and it will delete the column. So when we do this here, we can see that we have deleted the. A column df again this is a mutable operation we change df itself we remove the one from df object itself we mutated the object so we, we saw how to add and how to delete on column so this was like column wise operations we haven't done any transformations yet transformation means altering or like changing the data uh, of the column so we just did the read and delete we haven't done the transformations yet that we will see in future coming up so just on the simple side, picking up on the picking up on column, adding the column, delete the column. Let's go for the row also, like selecting the row, picking up the row, and you know, row-wise operation basically. Now, let's start with uh, just printing the DF first, so we know what DF we have here. So this is our DF look like. We have two columns, A, B, C, and D. These are our rows and row tagging. We are gonna do the row-level operations here. So just look at the second-level. Uh, you know, indexes here. Now, df has something called lock, like location. What it does, using LOC, you can basically pick on rows with secondary with secondary indexing or the custom indexing that you provide by yourself. That is, you can see here. When you say df.loc and when you provide b, then, hey, give me the row which is of b. So what is that? So this is this is what we are asking for here like locate locate b in my data frame so when you say locate loc this is role operation locate b so here you can see there is one b here so it will give you this like you know 
at B, you have these two things. So like this one record. So two and three, which has value 2.0 and like 2.20, and it's going to be like float type. So df.loc will like uh, will give you this uh, uh, this another uh, uh, data frame basically, which is it, it is basically a series. You can say that you can see like name equal to b and like data equal to b. So uh, picking up this one particular record here. So the main thing to note here: loc only works on your defined index or custom index or the name tagging that you gave. What if you want to work on that internal 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 thing? You use something called iloc. So iloc will basically work on internal indexing, which is basically going by, hey, this is my 0, this is my 1, this is my 2, this is my 3. So when you say iloc2, is go like, this is my 0, 1, 2, and 3. So we are looking at 2, so 0, 1, 2. So this is our second or second record, index-wise, internal indexing-wise. So iloc will do the internal indexing and lock will do like explicit indexing that you have given here so that's where that's why that's how we see 3.0 and 3.10 now uh, first question why 3 is converted to 3.0 because it has become the series and like single column and when you have single column uh, so it's kind of like i'm picking up this row but i'm looking at this one dimension only and when i'm looking at one dimension every element this one particular dimension has to be of same type and then I see three, and then I see three zero. There is one integer, there is one float. You all know about this type casting, upper type casting, where you, you know, try to type cast every element in your vector with the like the biggest, biggest type or the most accommodating type task. Um, sorry, type. So your float kind of like is a superset, and integer is kind of subset of float. So like, you know, you can like uh, convert integer to float without losing any value. You cannot convert float to integer. When you convert float to integer, you lose some value. You lose some information. So basically, converting integer to float without losing any value, it makes sense. So that's why, because a single vector, single vector has to have same data type. So your three is type upper type cast to float, and similar for the two, because now it is series. So that is why 3.0 and not 3, 2.0 and not 2. And lock is for external data set and iloc is for internal so hope that make things much more clear so this is like picking single single indexing now this is very much so uh, i just want to like uh, compare this with the with this with the series here we are doing here so we are doing like s of 0 and s of a we don't have iloc and lock because uh, it's indexing and it's easier to pick on 0 and a it's kind of like because here there is only one dimension right if this would, if S of A would have been a data frame, instead of picking A as an index, it would have picked A as an as an column. Are you understanding? If S, because S of A makes sense, because S of A, you can say that S of A can have only one meaning. This is this A I'm passing here is actually this secondary index because there is there is no concept of column here, because when you have data frame S of A. The meaning of a will become column here if your s is not series and it is it's a data frame because s is a data frame we and you cannot use this zero and a here because that would have to totally mean different in the in the frame of data frame and that is why we have added this lock and i lock and we are not going with this same idea as series series can go with zero and a because there is no concept of column here and when you pass zero and a it it can only mean one and one thing that we are talking about that single index uh, in case of data frame, we have like column here and zero and a could mean column. So using only zero and minus a for data frame would be ambiguous. What do we mean by a? Is it an index or column? So that is why we use lock and i lock as a pointing out index. And when you're talking about the column, we just we use this notation for the column. So just to say that why series has series can do without lock and i lock and why data frame has to go through i lock and i lock why both are about the same index uh, row level operations. So because DFB, let's just do me once. DFB would pick on whole column. Uh, so there's no B. This is like, it has to be DF2 because, you know, it look for the column here. So just making the point right, like, you know, B is B exists in the row. B is an exit in column. Because when you say DF of 2, it look for the column. Just going to the concept again. 
uh, okay now let's come to the uh, range part so when you provide df to gem3 so uh, this is basically you are providing the uh, here you don't need because 2 and 4 this is not like you are providing the now this can be easily inferred as a row level indexing and doesn't get confused with the uh, column name because 2 to gem4 is not like row the columns are not range columns are like individual independent like you cannot index column with you know column zero column one column two there is no column zeros one and two all the columns are independent independently tagged and there is no like indexing on column there is indexing on row row can be zero row one row two row so that is something like there is a concept of data frame that data frame can be you know indexed based on row like there is internal zero one two three but there is no internal zero one two for the column or the column are not columnly indexed. You cannot access your column with the index. You can only access your column. I mean, there is no internal index. You can only access column with this explicit index. And this explicit index are considered as a more of a, not as a incremental list, but more as like a bunch of a data point, a bunch of, a, you know, uh, like a string object. The column is more like a set of string objects and not like a series or not like a iterable. This is not an iterable. Because of that, the only thing iterable in this uh, DF of row and column is rows. As I told you, columns are not iterable. All the columns are considered as an independent column. So because of that, you can do DF2 gem4 and it will like end up with uh, end up as a uh, you know like you can pick the rows because of that. Because of that, you can do this here because uh, there is no indexing concept in columns. So when you say DF2 gem4. Understand that we are only talking about rows, and this is not a column thing here. So because of that, you can do that without lock and iLock here. There's no lock and iLock when you put the range. And when you say 2 and 4, so 0, 1, 2, and 4. So you are picking on those last two. So you can see them here. OK. Now, this was like uh, selecting in your data frame. Now let's go for the something more, like append. Like what about if you do two data frame? And you want to like append one on the another. Uh, so let me kind of like just show you what DF and uh, DF to look like. So this is our DF. Our DF look like this. Sorry, where are we? Yeah, here. Yeah. Our DF look like this: zero, one, AB. This is our df2 it looks like this so like similar but different values here so what is the difference like both has same row indexing been like same not indexing same uh, uh, row tagging same column tagging and uh, values are different so this is one two three four this is five six seven eight so two data frame with so same uh, row and column tagging and now let's do the append here and let's uh, print the df now just try to guess what happened here. I did df.append up and uh, when I did df.append, I executed once. So right now my df has been modified already. Now I'm re-executing this again. So basically I appended three times. When I ran this thing two times, it did append operation two times. And what do you first thing observe here? Like, hey, this is supposed to be indexed. Why it is duplicated? As I told you, this index is more like a tagging. And you can really duplicate tagging. Because you're tagging, you're tagging. When you're tagging, you're not saying that, hey, uh, this is going to be unique. The internal indexing, however, the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, those will be unique. But this row tagging could be anything. This is just a tagging. You're telling that, hey, I'm going to call this row this. And I can call two rows with the same name. That could be two Rahul in my classroom. That is fine. But their role number is going to be unique. One gonna be 104 and one gonna one gonna be 112. That's not gonna change, and because of that, uh, with that metaphor, your zero one two three four is more like the name of your student in your classroom. It could be duplicate, but the role number, which is like internal, and you don't see them, you don't call people by the role name generally. And that's why they are internal, and that's what you should use normally. So that is internal. That won't change. So when I say, so this new data frame will have zero one two three four five, but 
because the name uh, the row tagging can be replicated so that is what you see here for the df and now let's do that so what i'm going to do here i'm going to say that hey df dot drop and when i say drop i'm going to say that drop all the elements which has uh, so this drop is row level operation that means i'm dropping certain rows and as drop suggests i'm deleting rows and when i'm deleting rows i'm telling them hey delete all the rows which has zero now see that i'm using a circular bracket to pass zeros we'll come to that later so when i'm saying that when i'm like executing this whole thing you saw that all the rows with zero were deleted so when i am saying zero i'm basically when i'm saying zero that means i can point to all the records which are tagged as a zero so let's say i am using in certain kind of uh, certain use case where i have all these records and i'm going to tag them as a uh, let's say just male and female m and f all the records are tagged with m and f and i can say hey i don't want all the female and i can say df dot drop f and it will drop all the female records so this is basically tagging of the records now this can be very well you can just create one more dimension here like hey let's you know say male female and like put m and f here as a one column and you know try to use the uh, uh, some kind of compare operation to like select the column that can be very well done in that case uh, you know you were using this row as your extra dimension you are not using row as your dimension you are using ca or male female as your like you are adding the column for male female and using that as a dimension instead of this as a dimension so as i told you like information can be represent in like abc and that could be your three dimension data set or this third column of male female you can just like row tag them as male female here and now you are you have only two feature and your third feature that you like map to the row so these are a conceptual thing how you want to use based on use case how you want to do that but the whole idea is this is the tagging although we call it indexing but this are basically tagging and uh, because it's a tagging you can have duplicate tagging and when you point to like when you do the duplicate tagging when you like say delete this one thing is going to delete everything that that is tagged with that particular one name okay so this is all about so we did row level operations before that we did column level operations now actually get into the actual statistical thing that we can do uh i might take some more time uh we are still halfway through but maybe we're going to continue tomorrow understand this is all very very important uh you can learn a lot of data science by yourself going out but this is something that you will probably procrastinate not learning so as you can see that i have a meeting in 10 minutes but um anyways i'll see how far i how far we can go here uh, i'll try to complete complete in some kind of logical conclusion uh so descriptive analytics first let's create our data frame so same thing three columns panda series and uh, passing the data here and we are able to create the create the data here now let's so this is our table basically you can call it a table data frame is much more metaphorically look like a table there are columns there are rows and there are like data which could be of any data type number float strings let's say you want to do transpose now we know what is mathematical transpose mean your row becomes column and column becomes rows so this is your row which has become column and this is your second third for all the rows have become now your columns and same the this is possible because uh, this is all just name tagging so all your the row level name tagging now become column level row tagging and column level row tagging become row level row tagging so um, it's a transpose you know what it is now lot let's talk about the axis now if you remember we talked about uh, axis in our uh, np where we say that uh, 0 and 1 and 0 and 1 basically represent our uh, different indices so uh, when you say 0 is our is your row and when you say 1 is your column so uh, let me so this might be just confusing let me just go back and print the original data frame so this is our original data frame so you can see here when when i said df indexes it says that you have two indexes this is the first representation of index and this is my second representation of index in the list my first index or which is pointed at x is equal to 0 is basically you know like it can represent as range index start 0 stop 5 and stay equal to 1 so this basically this one you can think about creating you know 0 to 
this is your row. So basically, this is this represents your row index, and which is point to like zeroth, like first, and uh, sorry, zeroth, like zeroth, like the zeroth thing, and the one thing that is like pointing to your column. So you can see that it's an index name, age, rating, and then d type equal to object because it's a string. There is no string in d type. It's an object in Panda, so you can see d type, d -type equal to object. Uh, so name, age, rating, and uh, so it just tell that. It just verified that uh, df dot axis when x is equal to zero, I'm talking about the rows, and when x is equal to one, I'm talking about the column. Because when we are we are going to be doing a lot of operations, we can tell that hey, is this the row level operation or column level operation? Because this could be done on both of the types. Now let's talk about df of uh, df dot d types, which is basically uh, what are the d types that is in being inferred by column. So you can quickly look at the data and say that hey, what are the Data type of each of this thing, you can say df dot d types and tell that name, age, and rating will have name as a string object, age as an integer in 64, float as a float 64. Shape, which is uh, basically row and column or dimension one, dimension two, however uh, you want to call it. So here your data frame has like you know five rows, one dimension, and second dimension is your column, which is like three of them. So uh, so numpy and uh, numpy and uh, uh, pandas has different idea of what is a shape. So their shape is basically like you know uh, uh, multiple dimensions here. So here, when you say shape, just when I, when it's a data frame, it's a row column. Zero one row column. That is how the mapping is. Row is always point to zero. One is always point to column. So shape is five rows, three column. Df dot size. Df dot size basically how many elements are there in total. So it's a matrix with five rows, three columns, so five into three, there are 15 elements are there in our whole data frame. So that's why you see df dot size equal to 15. Size means every element in your data frame. That's going to be probably multiplication of your shape. Now df dot values. So what if, if you want to like convert your uh, data frame like into uh, NumPy array? So, uh, so, con so to access your data, you can use df dot values. And it will give you. So you want to know what is the type of df dot types, df dot values. So you can say it's a numpy nd array. Nd array is like num, uh, multi-dimensional, like n-dimensional array. So uh, when you want to like convert your df into numpy, you can say df dot df dot df dot values. And if you want to see what it says for type of df, so that will be your data frame. So just to see that we are df dot values will take you to the different data data type and extract all the values that you have there. Okay, df dot head. Uh, this is very similar. Uh, I mean, the I mean it's it's very uh, telling that head means top rows, top records with whatever number you pass. If you don't pass it, I think take five as a default and five or ten as a default. I don't remember, but you can say custom number and then it will tell you what is the give me the head. This is often we will use uh, when we are exploring data. We'll see it probably tomorrow. Tail, same thing. Look from the bottom, bottom three records, so that you can see here. Df dot sum. So try to like make a sum on each uh, axis, on each like axis one or each each column. So here is your here is your like a uh, um, so because string, so it kind of like do concatenation of the string. It's the age, add all the age, rating, add all the ages. So df dot sum, it basically try to apply sum on each column and whatever makes sense for that particular data type. So when I so when I take this particular column, which is basically a string or object, and when I add all the object, which is basically a string, you can just basically you are just basically doing concatenation operations. And here it, when you're applying number on uh, sum on the numbers, it's basically sums, so do the sum. So it makes sense, kind of like logically what makes sense for the sum. If you remember uh, operation override based on data type, this is something metaphorically you can say. And let's say if you want to perform the, so if you remember, uh, so when you want to perform the df dot sum on the, mm -hmm. um, on the row, on, on like row level, row level operation, so basically try to add Every row, so like column wise, like do column wise, like uh, do this operation on each column. So when I provide index equal to one, so basically add 
sum all the columns. When I say one means like sum all the columns. When I not say nothing, the sum all the rows. So I try to sum all the columns. Now you can say that if I have three things to sum, there are two numbers and one string. So it doesn't make sense to add string to the numbers, like what it will be, because uh, string is totally different kind of genre of types and numbers are totally different kind of genre. As I say, number genre can, can, can talk about integer and float and you can come from, you can convert number to float, float to number. So it come, it, it, all the numbers floating integer come from single realm. So like single kind of uh, like category or single kind of the area. So you can actually sum different kind of uh, float and integers, but string is very much different kind of realm than this number realm. So string doesn't make sense how you add string to the numbers. So what do you do? So pandas basically when you try to like add strings and numbers together, it just ignores string and add the numbers. So try to do what makes sense basically. So 25 and three, so it is really 29 or 23. Uh, sorry, this is like, uh, this is my, uh, wait, this is 25, 25 and 24. So that's why, uh, let me just print a data frame so it makes sense what is going on. Okay, so 25 and four, that is 29, 26 and three, that is 29. So, you know, this is summing all the, it's a like sum all the columns basically, like, and ignore string because it doesn't make sense. And df dot mean, you know what mean is? It's an average, right? So it will try to. So when you say df dot mean, it's like perform this on all the rows. So x is zero. So basically, uh, average all the age and average all the rating. So that you can see here. And mean is a numerical operation. Doesn't make sense on string. So that's why you don't see the name here because what is the average of name? Like it's a string. There is no, you know, doesn't make sense. There is not no operation defined on string. So be because of that. You don't see it here, but on the num on the numbers and float, you can have the average, so you can see average and rating, age and rating here. Same for the standard deviation; they are only defined on numbers. Now, df dot describe. So we were picking up all the like you know sum, mean, standard deviation individually, but you can do all in the same one method. It's called df dot describe. Df dot describe basically pick all the columns and like just like provide all kinds of statistics over the numerical values. You only pick DFN rating because uh, uh, by default, you only pick on statistics. They are numerical based statistics or numer numerical based description values, description of statistics. So count, count, mean, standard deviation. And like, uh, this is the minimum number, this is the maximum number, and all the uh, uh, quadrals, uh, first quadrant, half, second quadrant, or the distribution of those numbers. So that you can see in the uh, DF that describe. Now, what if if you want to also include the uh, now uh, work you want to work with a string? So with the string, you have something called uh, df dot describe include equal to object. So in that case, you are only going to see the statistic that are for the object type. And as I told you, object is basically in the string. And now string has different kind of statistic than numbers. Number you go all you know mean, max, and count, and percentage, and everything. But for so what is what is for the object? So basically count. Count is like how many types of, of those are there. Unique, how many unique words are there, like unique unique characters, or I mean, unique words or unique like uh, unique cell are there. Top and frequency. So what is the top one? So here we have like all of them are only occurrence is only one time. So anyone can be top because all of them are like only one time. And frequency is one. So basically, if you have something which has like if win had occurred two times, so it couldn't have been a clear winner as a win. Win is the only one which is two time. Everything is one time and frequency is two. So that could have been we can we could have seen here if we have duplicate here. And then when you say all, so like hey, I want to see everything. You can see everything, and wherever it doesn't make sense, it just say none. So you have like frequency top and so count is like common for everyone. How many records are there? How many like uh, points are there? Five and then unique top and frequency. So, you know, this is something is not for age and rating, so it's none. And same for the name, they exist. And standard and all these numbers are doesn't exist for name and text. So basically it all makes sense. Now I would like to stop here. Uh, we will continue and pick it up from here where we will go more into row level and column le column wise operations. Uh, but uh, let's let's try to pause here and we will start continuing working or presentation from tomorrow, which will be much more uh, into data types. Uh, please be sure that 
uh, this is all will take a lot of time. But once we are into into uh, once we pass through this particular presentation, this particular Jupyter notebook, everything will be like much shorter and faster, and presentation based. So this is the most code that you're gonna see at the same time, line by line. Is this in in this Jupyter notebook only? It will be much more on granular level and much more, uh, you know, doing doing much more like faster work going forward. So, thank you very much. Uh, before we close, uh, I would like to hand over to Ami, madam, and uh, take over all the logistics that we have to take care of, like presentations. I mean, like the attendance and stuff like that. So, over to Ami, madam. I'm gonna stop recording. Oh, sorry, stop sharing. <laughs>